Welcome back to Season 3 of the podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Blackwood. As many of you know, I wrote my autobiography as a survivor of human trafficking called Custom Justice, but if you didn't know, you do now. Keeping in line with that, this entire season has been focused on interviewing people who did or plan to write about their own experiences as trauma survivors and how they overcame their past. If that sounds like you, reach out. We can talk about having you on the show, too. As much as we all hate commercials, they are a necessary evil these days. This is what keeps the show on the air. You can also show support by purchasing one of my mini books or donating through PayPal. You can find the links to either option in the podcast description. As always, a portion of the proceeds do go to local organizations that help fight human trafficking. Hey folks, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Blackwood. I have a fascinating author uh, and survivor with me today. His name is D. Neil Elliott. Uh, He's been through some trials of his own, but he's also found some really interesting and amazing ways of being able to heal from these traumas uh, and kind of move on through his life. Uh, And I think he's got some really uh, amazing advice that's going to be able to help a lot of people. So Neil, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Amanda. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. I am excited to get to know you. Um, I know that when we initially contacted each other, um, you had filled out my little questionnaire thing. And the answers that you sent back to me were absolutely astonishing. And I'm excited to kind of share your story with people. Let's start out with where are you? Um, where were you born and raised? Uh, originally Vancouver, British Columbia, just south of that, really a little community south of that. And I mean, give everybody context here. I was born in 1960. So my youth is different than, you know, kind of uh, the experience that people have as children today or, you know, later in life. Right. But your photo does not look like somebody that's 19 years older than me. That's amazing. You look younger than Uh, me. Oh, well, you know, that's because of the date of the photo. (laughs) <laughs> you know when i when i when i did my book i used to do acting so that was a headshot when oh. i did my when i did my book uh it was in the middle of the pandemic so i didn't go out and get new photos done so i just took one from uh from you know a host of photos that i have oh that's pretty smart i've got a bunch of those myself i used to be a model and actress oh very cool well, then yeah. those would probably be well professionally done right so they're always you know, they're always right. well, uh, uh, what's the right word? <laughs> well received and acceptable. <laughs> yeah, well received. <laughs> Composition is good, typically. That's, that's the word I look for. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the trauma that you experienced. I know you went through some rough stuff. Yeah. So, and I'll keep this really, I'll keep it short and get to the trauma bit. But, um, you know, so give everybody context. Professional engineer with an MBA. Uh, manage large projects, you know, small to large projects, a few, you know, a few million to a hundred million dollars. Um, and a hundred million a few years ago was real money today. It's not much, but, um, uh, so as an engineer, you know, kind of know what's right, what's wrong. We all do this. We grow up, we get a sense of the world. We make choices, uh, around what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. And, um, you know, it went into consulting in 2002 and I kind of unknowingly to me, but slowly drove myself into this really deep, dark, despondent depression. And I wouldn't have called it that. I would have just said I was done with life, you know, like fed up no matter what I do, no matter how much money I make, no matter what I own. Uh, I was just miserable. And I had, you know, great family, great kids, you know, fantastic wife. But the reality is we're all actors in our environment. We wear this facade and we project whatever we want to family, friends, clients. And uh, in reality, even though I might have come across in an affable and kind and generous way, uh, I was just a misery inside. And, uh, you know, so in 2015, I found myself in this place of, I've got to do something to get out of this Because, you know, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm just, I'm done with this, you know. And so it's been a couple of years. And uh, and in 2017, November 2017, I decided 
I've had enough at the end of my rope. Uh, our house had been on the market for five years. Oh, uh, finally, finally sold. And um, <clears throat> uh, we had this beautiful waterfront home, a very expensive waterfront home. We have this beautiful waterfront home and uh, bank owned most of it, of course. And, um, you know, it finally sold. So that, that burden of that debt was gone. My wife got on a plane to visit family and friends in Toronto, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I sat, we were in this little one bedroom rental apartment in the city. I sat down at the kitchen table, planned out my suicide, crafted my suicide note. I was done with it. End of life. I just, I was planning it out about three months because I wanted to ensure my wife would be okay. I could help move, get rid of all the crap I accumulated over a lifetime and uh, ease the burden for her. Uh, but yeah, I was, you know, that was it. I was done. Wow. Do you think there were any warning signs that anybody could have seen or did you keep all that hidden? All hidden. No one knew. Yeah. But my wife finally, I, I owned up to this a couple of years later and, um, she was incredulous is the right word. <laughs> yeah, I'm know, sure. She, she just, you know, she couldn't believe that first she didn't believe that it was true. And then second, after she came to that realization that it was, she um, couldn't believe that she missed any warning signs and just didn't understand what was going on. Wow. And, you know, that's not unusual. I mean, we yeah. are so good at acting in our lives in everyday circumstances. Um, it's not always obvious. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We can be going through the hardest times of our lives and still be doing it with a smile on our face because we've learned to be um, experts at fronting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, being open and truthful to it, you, you know, at least I, I I'll talk about me because I can't talk about anybody else, but I would have felt judged. I would have felt less than, even though I did internally, I certainly didn't want to have other people feel that added pressure from other people. Right. And some of my darkest days, I think one of the things that prevented me from coming forward with it was the fear that people would say, oh, it's nothing, you'll get over it. Um, because I'd had that happen where I told somebody that I was upset or something tragic had happened. And that's that's not helpful. No, it's not helpful. And the other, you know, people may have said things like this too as well. Um, you know, time will heal all wounds. Don't worry right. about it, you know. Right. You're strong, you'll get over it, you know, trying okay. to be helpful, but <laughs> yep, yep. And I still hear that one look at everything that you've already been through, you'll get through this one too, just fine, you'll get over it. But you know, that's not helpful because eventually somebody is going to be tired of having to fight every single day of their life just to stay alive. Yeah, that's that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, well said. <laughs> So how has your trauma impacted your life and your life with your family? Uh, you know, so, uh, geez, I don't know where to, I don't know where to start to answer that, but <laughs> let me, let me answer kind of towards the end and then we can get into how did that happen? Maybe that's the way to go. Okay. Um, you know, I've totally transformed. I view life uh, as such a gift. And everything in my past that I would have formally judged and regretted and been maybe angry about the situations that happened to me or how I was treated, I see all of that today as a, a wonderful gift, a gift for me to learn the lessons that I wanted to learn, that my soul wanted to learn, and finally get to a point where I woke up and understood how and why we are here, what we are to do, the process we're to go through, and most importantly, how to go through that process to come to this new place where, you know, I used to say to my wife, you look at life through rose colored glasses. Well, you know, now I can say, you know, I just, everything is such a blessing in life everything is so magical and uh and beautiful and we just need to understand who we really are and then how to let that aspect of ourself 
gain mastery in our life. And as we do that, you just, you come to this point of just total inner peace and love and you feel prosperous and abundant, even though nothing may have changed in your environment, but just your whole view of the world will totally change. And so that's what's changed to me. You know, like I am just, I'm an entirely, I'm not a different person. I'm, although people might say that, but, um, I've just come back to who I really am and I know why I'm here and I have a, a new purpose in life that has nothing to do with earning money or, uh, you know, getting a job promotion or having a bigger house or more cars or, you know, boats or whatever else, or motorcycles in my case. <laughs> um, you know, none of that, like all of that are just, it has no meaning to me really. That is beautiful i love that you have come so far that's amazing yes yeah and and it took a you know it took some work but uh oh yeah there's a process there's a process but if you're willing to go through the process and you're willing to be open and curious like a little child uh you know approaching something without prejudgment and uh without um without any judgments as you go through it, I tell you, you can totally transform your life, no matter where you're at, ill, healthy, happy, depressed, live in a mansion, live on the street, wherever you are, you can totally transform your life if you're willing to be open to it. Well, speaking of being open to it, to it and doing the work, what was it that you did? What helped you to heal from your trauma? Kind of the, the bullet points. <laughs> uh, bullet points. So in 2015, uh, so when I realized I was in this, you know, done with life situation and trying to get out of it, I picked up some spiritual books. I picked up some, I uh, like newly issued spiritual books. I picked up some scientific books and I was going through this process of trying to figure out how can I get out of this? And uh, in 2017, none of that studying worked, but really what it was doing, it was laying this foundation for me. Uh, but none of that studying worked. Uh, a week before I sat down to plan out my suicide and craft my suicide note, this material showed up for me that promised to liberate me from my thinking if I studied it and I followed it. And I thought, well, I was looking for any sliver of hope. So I thought, okay, I'll give this one last go. I'll read this material. If it works, great. And if it doesn't, I can always pull the trigger. And so I pushed out the date of my suicide still went through with getting rid of stuff and moving, you know, all those motions. Yeah. And um, I started, I embarked on this journey. So it would have been, you know, November, 2017, a year to the day I woke up, my depression was totally gone. I had this new outlook in life. I was just, I was full of this inner peace and love and joy. And uh, a month after that, I, I went into, you learn that you'll learn this meditation if you go through the seven steps I offer in my book. Um, I went into this meditation and near the end of December, 2018. And I very quickly rose in um, consciousness vibrational level. And all of a sudden the spiritual energy, it just, it flowed in through my head, through the top of my head filled my body and then all of a sudden i was just totally enveloped uh, like a, a deep sea diver suspended in the middle of the ocean totally enveloped in unconditional love i was wasn't judged for i felt like i wasn't judged for anything that i had done uh, i didn't care what anybody had done to me in the past i didn't care what aches and pains my body had what illnesses it had i just i wanted to stay in that state forever. And I came out of that meditation. Two days later, I had the exact same meditation. And at that point, I knew that this new knowledge I gained, that this process I followed brings us back to our truth. And if you're, and, and then by knowing that, then I've just continued on this path. And, uh, and just life just keeps getting better and better and better. It's just, it's amazing. Wow. That is amazing. How you said it took about a year to really get through all of it. It took a, it took a year and, and you know, you, you, this, this, this 
process I offer to people, these seven steps, it's so logical and rational. Like you got to remember here, I'm an engineer, right? So, right. <laughs> you know, it needed something that I could understand and make sense of scientifically to bridge this gap between spirituality and science, what we know in science today. And, you know, this is all done in a way that everybody will understand. But, you know, we know about a bunch of concepts in science today, but we don't let it seep into our consciousness to really let it to let us understand what that means. And so this process takes you through leveraging what we know in science today, but opening you up to come back to who you really are to make a connection with um, our creator, source, you know, God, Yahweh, the Tao, whatever you want to call it. And you make this, when you make this connection by going through this process of this inner cleansing and rebuilding of your consciousness, you raise your vibrational frequency until you make this connection. Our, our creator is so spiritually refined and such a high vibrational level that it cannot enter into our, our low vibrational level of our human consciousness to make itself known to us, even though it radiates unconditional love unstintingly to us 24 7 we can't feel it because we are in such a low state of vibrational frequency of consciousness that we won't let it enter into us and let us make itself known to you and so when you go through this process of this inner cleansing and rebuilding of your consciousness in, in a very logical and rational way with logical and rational uh, scientific uh, understanding, you will get to this place where you raise your vibrational frequency and then it makes itself known to you. It enters into you and you can feel it. And you'll feel the energy come in through your head. You'll feel it go travel through your body. And as you go through this process where it's helping you now cleanse yourself of all of these false beliefs and false understandings, and it brings you back to your truth. And then you continually get assistance and help and love from our creator to help you on your journey. Do you feel like this, this process that you've gone through, has this been beneficial for more than yourself? Has this been beneficial for your relationships with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers? Uh, yes, it's been beneficial for everybody. Now, not everybody may feel like that okay um because what you know so as we grow up from you know children to adulthood we you know first come into the world as this baby and we're and the brain does not yet develop to a point until about age five where it starts to make decisions for itself so really this little baby is this little embodiment of love but what it's doing is it's absorbing everything in its environment. The words it hears, the type of language it hears, is it, you know, denigrating and hateful and vengeful and judgmental, or is it loving and kind and supportive? Those kinds of things. It feels the emotions that everybody around it is expressing. And it's starting to shape and hone and hue that baby's personality uh, and this stuff gets programmed in the subconscious and unconscious mind. And then from, you know, age five, it start, can make its own decisions and stuff. So it goes out and it starts to learn new things and reinforce its subconscious programming and its beliefs about life. And so as a baby grows from babyhood to adulthood, you know, we think we're becoming versed in the ways of the world. But what we're really doing is shaping and honing and hewing our personalities and our beliefs about life and our existence and separation to uh, help us learn, our soul learn the lessons that it wants to learn in this lifetime. And then what we do is we project outward um, our, our experience of, of what we believe to be true and and then we make a judgment about it. So I'll give you an example. So what I was going to say uh, just before I say that is, so what you see is merely a reflection of your beliefs. And here's the example. In this uh, pandemic, you know, no one on the street, 
but these two women uh, were out walking. They went for a walk and they were approaching about a, a block from our place. Here is an old historic building and <clears throat> you have to, it goes up these really long steps to the second floor. That's how you enter the building. So as they're approaching the base of the building, these two women, an elderly woman comes out of the second floor. She's angry. She's gesticulating wildly. She stares down at them. And she says in this really angry way, you know, stare all you want, stare if you will. I don't care. You can think what you want. And <clears throat> some other language. And uh, one of the women, one of the women at the base of the stairs, she says, oh, my goodness, this woman's dangerous. I'm phoning the police. So she pulls out her cell phone. She dials 911. The other woman, she says to herself, I wonder if she's okay. I wonder if she needs help. So she reached out to the woman. And as soon as she reached out in a, in a supportive, kind, you know, inquiring way, the woman at the top of the stairs calmed right down and explained her situation. The only difference in the experience of the two women at the base of the stairs is their beliefs about life, what, was, what they programmed in their subconscious mind and then reinforced as they grew up from babyhood to adulthood. And so when you can understand this, and I take people through some science material in my book to help them perhaps, I try and take everybody through the same process I went in my book um, in a high level way to ever get everybody to the same point of understanding before I introduce this other material to them. And the reason I do that is because I want to open everybody up to some new concepts and get everybody on the same page before I introduce this other material. And so <clears throat> part of the first things that I had to learn was everything that you think is right or wrong, good or bad, true or false, is really just a belief. And if you can understand that that's really just a belief, then you have a little fissure, a little crack in your, um, in your mind, so to speak, that will enable you to say, well, if they're just beliefs, that means I could change my beliefs if I thought that was necessary and if I wanted to. And so then I take people through a process of understanding that what we know in science today, and I give examples of this, is that your thinking and your feeling affects your biology. And I give some people some suggested readings there if they're interested in that. But what you think about either draws illness and, and uh, uh, to your body or promotes the well-being of it. And so if you can understand that, well, if what I'm thinking about is negatively affecting my health, and then if I can understand what I need to, how I need to change my thinking to promote the well-being to my body, to my health, then I just need the process to understand that um, how you go about that process of this inner cleansing and rebuilding your consciousness. And when you go through this, then, and you're willing to go through this, you can totally transform your life. Not only your health and your well-being, but your relationships and your outlook in the world to <clears throat> everybody and anyone and whatever's going on in your environment. You know, I remember when I was a kid, there was a lesson in school where they were teaching us the value of words and the damage that they can do. And in the experiment, they had two different plants. And one of the plants, the kids would scream at every day. And the other ones, all the kids would say nice things to it every day. And the plant that had nice things said to it every day in kind ways um, seemed to flourish while the other one failed. And back in 2015, there was a scientific study that actually linked autoimmune diseases or most of the autoimmune diseases to severe trauma. So you got to think that something like this, like reprogramming your brain to think in healthier, more positive ways would have that positive effect on your body, you know, and it's not just mumbo jumbo um, magic speak. This is a real thing. It, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it's absolutely a real thing. And what a great experiment to teach children. And, and uh, you know, if anybody that's listening today wants to try this, 
buy two plants that are exactly the same. You know, maybe this spring that you're going to, you know, grow some tomatoes or something. Put them on opposite ends of your porch. One plant every day you talk to it in lovingly kind words. I love you. You are beautiful. You are magnificent. The other one on the other end of the porch, talk to it in hateful, demeaning, ugly terms. And you will see the effect of this. Every word that you speak has, just as sound has its own specific note and tone and vibrational frequency, every word that you speak has its own note and tone and vibrational frequency. Our bodies are 99% water. And in reality, uh, you know, if you go through some of the science material that I share with people, and it, you'll know about it if you're listening to quantum physics kind of talk um, as well. Uh, everything at a subatomic level is really just energy. Your words have a specific energy and frequency associated with them. The more loving and the more kind and the more considerate your language is, and not only your language, but your actual thoughts, because here's this thing about us wearing a facade. You might be kind and affable to somebody, but in reality, your internal thinking is that this person's a jerk, this person's an, you know, an a-hole. And it's not what you necessarily what you say to people, it's what you think that causes the problem, that causes the majority of the problem. But what you really need to do is get everything into alignment. If you get your thinking into alignment with where we come from, we come from unconditional love, we return to unconditional love when this ephemeral body dies. And if you can get your thinking in congruent and in alignment with where we come from and where we return to after death, then what you're doing is you're bringing this high vibrational level of frequency into your life, this high vibrational uh, energy. And that promotes the well-being and the health of your body. And your, your water is this for lack of a better term, this miracle communication system that can immediately reflect your thoughts. And so if you want, there's uh, videos that you can look at on YouTube uh, about water. And uh, there's experiments that are done with um, words or pictures. They put water, they put a little Petri dish with a little thin layer of water of it above a pitcher. They put it in the fridge to freeze it immediately, and then they take a photograph. And the water will take on the form of whatever picture they put it across. But they oh. extended these experiments, and they would say words to the, to the water, and then they'd freeze it. And then the patterns that came out, depending on the words, would be reflected in the water. Then they, did a, they extended this experiment to... Um, have people think about a specific thing, an image of something. Uh, and so not saying any words, just a thought. They'd freeze the water, take a photograph, and that thought would be reflected. So someone might think of a sword. That sword would show up in the picture of the frozen water. Wow. So this is the whole thing is that you're thinking what you think about. So you think with electrical impulses in the brain, you feel with magnetic impulses in the nervous system. Your, your thinking is actually an electrical blueprint, a consciousness plan of an event that's going to be created for you. Your feeling uh, magnetizes that plan to draw uh, electrical particles together to create the manifestation of this plan in your life. And so uh, what you think about and what you feel, you create these blueprints of consciousness that magnetize these events and these experiences that come into your life to help you learn the lessons that your soul wants to learn. So everything that comes into your life, be it something you consider to be good or bad, loving or, con or you know, hateful or vengeful, all of these things, all of these experiences you have manifested. You are the writer, the designer, the director, and the lead actor in your own life. 
everything that comes into your life you have created you want to change your experience you change how you think you want to you change how you think you need this process to get in to break up and dissolve uh, these patterns of thinking and feeling that you have programmed in your conscious and subconscious mind they, they become like concrete so you need this process to break them up and dissolve them and then rebuild them and as you do that and you start to change yourself from this inside out. Life is really a journey within, but we experience these things to help us come to this point of realization where we start to take this journey. And when you take this journey and you know how to do it and you follow a process that works, and I can tell you this process I followed works, you will change yourself from the inside out and then your whole experience of life changes everything you see changes and you will see beauty and joy and love and peace in e absolutely everything that happens in your life. Wow. Neil, how would you feel about reading a little bit of your book? Have you got a portion that you'd like to read for the audience? I have to get it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, but while you're doing that, I'll just talk about the book a little bit. It's called a higher road by D Neil Elliott. This is a seven-step process to inner peace, joy, love, abundance, and prosperity. Um, I'll tell you before I get into reading something here. In the, my book, I describe what I did in 2011. I decided that I wanted a uh, Lexus hardtop convertible. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll save up money and I'll buy that at some point in the future. And um, every day for a year, I had a picture of it. And every day for a year, I looked at that picture and I did a certain thing every day for a year at a few times a day. <laughs> a year later, uh, like unbeknownst to me, a year later, um, I had a lottery ticket in a local fair that, you know, I bought lottery tickets for every year for um, a p and &E. It's called Pacific National Exhibition. Uh, to, to, to win a house, of course. And they always had cars. I never paid attention to the cars. But anyway, um, I got a phone call in September of 2011. Or, yeah, 2011. And um, I had won this car that I had been visualizing <laughs> for a year. And I didn't. I just thought I was totally lucky. Later in my book, I describe... Um, I go through this process to describe how I created this blueprint, reinforced it and magnetized it through my thinking and my feeling and these actions that I did every day for a year that manifested this car unbeknownst to me. So let me just find something here that uh, I'm not sure what you'd like to hear, to be honest. Um, just, just kind of a sample to give us an idea of your writing style and maybe, maybe have a hint of advice for some of the, the folks that are looking to hopefully manifest something like a better life or a Lexus convertible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll go to this chapter here. Okay. So here we go. I know now that in order to be successful in transforming your life, you cannot do it using willpower alone. All of the methods I tried previously thinking positively, eliminating negative thinking, being grateful, being mindful, controlling emotions, and writing down and visualizing clear goals and outcomes, all required a continuous conscious effort of willpower. These methods prove transient, temporary, and likely will not work for most people because it was a battle of wills, willpower versus ego. I struggled relentlessly to adopt a more loving way of thinking, feeling, and responding to every experience. But while I, my willpower, remained the single motivating force within my consciousness, eventually my ego won, taking me back to my starting point. I was never successful at attaining a wholesale change in my thinking or emotions. All the things I wanted, yearned for, and hoped for eluded me. In the rest of this book, I offer you a method of cleansing your consciousness to achieve true peace, joy, abundance, and prosperity, and a method of embodying and expressing unconditional love. Feeling grateful, thinking positively, 
and being emotionally uplifted into an inner state of peace and love are all corresponding outcomes. You don't have to try to do or be these things. They just happen. Let's now begin this journey and learn how to achieve the lasting rewards of personal fulfillment and happiness for you. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. I, I know that I'm planning on picking up a copy of A Higher Road. When I go to look for it, where am I going to find it? It's available wherever books are sold. It's, uh, you know, Amazon or through your local bookstore. It's available in ebook form, Kindle, Apple, Nook, Kobo, and it's available globally. Beautiful. And there's always one last question that I ask my guests before I let them go. And I did warn you about this, um, but I didn't tell you what the question was. But what is one thing that you love about yourself that's not related to your physical appearance? Oh, I love the fact that I am a creator of everything in my world. And through my in my feeling I can manifest anything that I want but really what is I want to help this world come into a new state of uh, a new era of love and peace and so what I'm doing is I'm uh, uh, soon will be launching a, uh, a practice for 30 to 40 minutes where I ask people to join me once a week or, or maybe twice a week uh, to go through a process of uh, some uh, visual meditation and affirmation, uh, and then a holding of this intention through a meditation to help bring this world into a new era of love and peace, where we all live harmoniously and joyously and peacefully with one another. That's just absolutely beautiful. From engineer to human engineer <laughs> <laughs> you've had quite the road neil That's <laughs> thank you so much and uh i can tell you anybody can anybody can do this if you're open to it and, and willing to learn some new stuff and then follow a process and i think there's a lot of people that need this in their lives well there's uh certainly i'll tell you totally make your uh totally change your life totally change your world and how you look at it and uh, it's just so beautiful and peaceful. If you've enjoyed tonight's episode, please make sure you check out the episode description. There you're going to find links on how you can learn more about this guest, links to connect with them on social media, and how to support the podcast. Remember, I don't get paid to do this. My boss is a bit tight-fisted, but I can say that I work for myself. In short, this show really is all about the guest. If you've enjoyed their interview, please feel free to let them know. You can also tune into my other podcast, Growth from Darkness, which is co-hosted by a lovely lady from Australia. We talk about what trauma responses are and healthy ways to move beyond the past. For more information, just go to growthfromdarkness.com. Music.